Welcome to the Soldier for Life podcast, where we share information and resources for our military and veteran families, from employment and education to health and wellness and Army retirement. We're here to help you learn more about programs and resources that are available to our Army family. The information shared in this podcast does not constitute an endorsement by Soldier for Life, United States Army, or the Department of Defense. And now, let's get started with this week's episode. It's great to have you back with us on the Soldier for Life podcast. I'm your host, Colonel Jared Thomas, and we appreciate you tuning in. Every year, approximately 200,000 service members transition out of the military and start their post-military employment journeys. Today, we're going to talk about the careers and opportunities that are available to our service members and their families in one specific sector, the manufacturing industry. We are joined on the show today by Amy Thomas, the National Director of the Heroes Make America program at the Manufacturing Institute. Heroes Make America is the Manufacturing Institute's initiative to connect the military community with the manufacturing industry to build a pipeline of military trained and industry certified candidates. Amy, welcome to the show. We appreciate you spending time with us today. Colonel Thomas, it's a privilege to be here and thank you for the opportunity to talk with you today. Amy, before we get started talking about Heroes Make America, can you tell us a little bit about the Manufacturing Institute and what it does? Sure. At the Manufacturing Institute, we deliver solutions to help manufacturers build, diversify, and strengthen their workforce while offering best practices to the common workforce challenges. The Institute is a nonprofit. We're a 501c3, and we are the Workforce and Development and Education Affiliate of the National Association of Manufacturers, or the NAM. We're headquartered in Washington, D.C. We serve as trusted advisors to the manufacturing industry by launching innovative programs, bringing together industry leaders, and conducting cutting-edge research, all focusing on building the workforce of today and tomorrow. Some of our workforce initiatives are Women Make America, really inspiring more women into manufacturing careers. We have a youth initiative focused on bringing the world of manufacturing to middle and high school age students. We have a FAME apprenticeship program, and of course our Heroes Make America initiative that we'll be talking about today. That's awesome. And could you share with our listeners more about Heroes Make America and the programs that you offer that help connect military and veteran communities to manufacturers and how and why this initiative came about? I would love to. You know, Heroes Make America really came about because we had such a desperate need in our industry to really have a military to manufacturing a pipeline or pathway. When you look at the military community in our industry, manufacturing industry, it's almost a natural next career uh, step for our nation's military community. Veterans possess military training and experience uh, that equip them with unique skill sets and leadership qualities that allow them to not only succeed in manufacturing environments, but also manufacturing careers. When you look at manufacturing jobs, they're as diverse as the military. They're high tech, high skilled, high paying. However, you know, we do see some misconceptions in the industry where everyone thinks, oh, I'm going to be working on the shop floor or I'm going to be making widgets. So as part of the HEROES program, another uh, major focus that, that we have is really highlighting the careers in the industry and the diversity of those careers when you think about safety, quality, maintenance, logistics, HR, finance, IT, and many more. We also work to help the military community translate their military skills and experience Uh, so that they can better understand how they align with these careers. When you think about uh, the military, they have safety experience, logistics, communications, they work around heavy equipment, they're responsible for very um, expensive equipment, teamwork, all of these skill sets apply in manufacturing. It's just really helping them understand how they translate to that civilian career. That was a great point because, um, you know, what's important is just like the military has various uh, military occupational specialties. It sounds like you all also have various uh, professions that these um, military and veterans can transition to, um, you know, based on their skill sets or if they want to pivot to something different. So it's really neat that, uh, you know, that you all do that. Absolutely. And that's one of the main focuses of the program is, you know, to help the military community not only understand where these careers are, 
how they qualify for these careers and how to get directly connected in there. And veterans have all these skills and experience and training and leadership. Why not take that into your next civilian career? And in our industry, at any given month, we've got about half a million jobs open. And, you know, as we see the labor force shortage continues, the military community is going to maintain a vital source of talent for manufacturers nationwide. So building this program, Heroes Make America, to connect the military community with the manufacturing industry and create these direct pathways was something that, like I said, was desperately needed. And we launched that first SkillBridge program in 2018 at Fort Riley in Kansas. Uh, We started with 13 transitioning service members and a manufacturing operations course, a certified production technician course, where those candidates earned certifications in safety, quality, maintenance, processes and production, OSHA, and forklift. So during this nine-week course that we launched, it was very packed. Monday through Thursday, they're doing coursework, hands-on labs with Hmm. specialized equipment. And then on Fridays, they were actually going into tours with the manufacturing companies. That's amazing. Yeah, they could see firsthand, you know, what how the products are being made. They could talk to veterans that work there. So they're really getting ingrained into the industry. So, you know, they started this journey nine weeks prior. And then at the end of this journey, they're, you know, having offers to go into this great industry at these manufacturers they may not even have known had existed before. Yeah, what's interesting is um, the fact that, you know, when we first came about in Soldier for Life, uh, we were really focused on the unemployment piece for our, you know, service members as they were transitioning out. Now it's a little less of the unemployment, but more of the underemployment. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you just identified uh, what was important. Uh, and this is the fact that there are jobs out there and uh, those jobs are looking for individuals with certain skill sets and uh, certain training that they can bring to uh, that particular industry. So the fact that, you know, soldiers can uh, transition into a field uh, that can become a career for them in the future is critically important uh, for our service members and their family members. Absolutely. And when we launched Heroes, you know, we were really focusing on those younger enlisted, maybe in four to eight years, they weren't going to retire, didn't have a lot of um, higher education with them. But, you know, how could they take that skills and experience that they had in the military and translate that into a civilian manufacturing career where they could come in as a production supervisor, maintenance supervisor, you know, making really great money. So we launched that first class and we're thinking, hey, we'll pilot this for a year and see where it goes. I mean, that first class was so successful. By the end of that class, we were rapidly, you know, expanding across the country with these training programs. Our industry was excited about where this was going. And, you know, fast forward almost seven years. Now we're one of the top skill bridge programs out there. We've got four on-site training locations, two 100% remote training pathways so that they can learn no matter their uh, geographic location. And we also have great direct engagement pathways through career fair. Heroes Connect events um, that we've created that they can interact live with these manufacturers that are hiring to really not only learn about the company, but start the hiring process. And then for manufacturers, we've created uh, hiring resources and tools. Like, for example, we've got a Heroes Make America resume distribution that anyone in the military community can upload their resume to. And that goes out to hundreds of manufacturing and supply chain companies to recruit from. And we've also created some manufacturing readiness badges. These are relatively new to us, uh, but these are solely based on their military training Uh, They upload their JST and then they, you know, based on their MOS and their training, they could qualify for manufacturing readiness badges and safety, quality and maintenance. And we're looking to add logistics and leadership to that as well, too. So employers can then look at the skills that they have and say, oh, great, you know, they've got this maintenance badge. I know they're qualified for this job. So we're trying to bring the initiative together so it not only helps the job seeker, but our industry so that there is a constant pipeline of uh, military talent that our industry can look at to fill these, you know, over half a million jobs that we have. You know, so for our listeners out there, why should veterans consider a career in manufacturing? And what is it about veterans and their experience that makes them a good fit for manufacturing? 
I think when you look at veterans, they, you know, possess those military skills, leadership, training, all of this is that what our industry is so desperately looking for. Veterans are trainable. They can motivate a team. They understand hard work. They know how to show up on time. They usually arrive early and will probably stay late. Uh, they're natural leaders and they're used to working in diverse cultures and environments. So I think manufacturing careers allow them to continue to work in team environments and create products that impact people's lives. So I just think the diversity of the jobs out there, the flexibility of the job schedules, if somebody doesn't want to be tied uh, to a desk all day long, there's all kinds of roles in manufacturing that allow them to have the flexibility in their workplace and continue to work in a team-based environment. That's a great point. And I think that, uh, you know, when veterans transition out of the military, a lot of them seek that purpose, what is out there for them that they can feel like, uh, they're producing something, you know, bigger than themselves. And, and you know, the industry, and uh, as far as the manufacturing industry, is one area, I believe, that, you know, soldiers and family members can enter into um, and feel like, okay, I've made something, I've done something, I can see the results of my work, you know, on a daily basis. And I think that's a really good fit, along with all the other tangible skills that you mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, soldiers and veterans bring uh, to a workforce. I'm really excited about, you know, what uh, your organization is doing to help uh, transitioning service members enter into uh, a career like uh, manufacturing because it's, it's critically important for our nation um, and it's critically important, you know, for our veterans as they transition uh, back to civilian life. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And, you know, when we looked at our SkillBridge program, and as you know, SkillBridge allows those, you know, transitioning from the military to take advantage of a training program in their last six months. But we also wanted to include the broader military community. So how do we include their spouses, uh, dependents, guard, reservists, veterans, so that they could get access to these same training programs and, you know, experience learning about the industry and seeing what types of careers are out there. And I think, you know, when you look at our HEROES program, to date, we've graduated over 1,500 participants, issuing wow. over 7,600 certifications. And we are so proud. We have a 92% placement rate. So we um, they're earning these great careers. They're going into great careers. And through our training programs, uh, they're finding careers that are averaging $80,000 a year in salary. Wow. and. $24 an hour, and we placed in 48 states across 350 manufacturing and supply chain companies. So even though we've only got training programs, you know, at four locations in, you know, Fort Riley, Kansas, Fort Cavazos, Texas, Fort Stewart, Georgia, Fort Liberty, North Carolina, and our two remote training pathways, what we're doing in the space of highlighting these careers and creating company visibility, I mean, to the military community, you know, speaks for itself that we're able to, you know, relocate the military community across 48 states right now. Like we're we're really excited about that. And it's exciting to see how uh, the world of manufacturing is changing. That's amazing. And you talked about the uh, kind of the placement rates, you know, so what types of career opportunities are available in manufacturing now? And, uh, you know, how has that uh, changed over the years? The roles in manufacturing are as diverse as you can think of. I mean, there's all kinds of roles in manufacturing. I like to say we place anywhere from the shop floor to the C-suite. So it's really, you know, what are you looking to go into? And, and a lot of our military members, they could be doing one thing in the military and maybe they don't want to do the same thing in the, in the civilian world. So there's all different types of pathways. And when you think of industry careers today or even 10 years ago have changed so much when you think about high tech, 3D printing, automation, robotics, um, maintenance, you know, you think about those careers, what does that look like in manufacturing today? And, you know, it seems to be since COVID, you know, one of the number one requests is is job flexibility. And what does that look like? You know, maybe I don't want to sit behind a desk all day. I want to be a supervisor or a safety inspector, or quality inspector when I'm walking around, working with people, a maintenance tech, you know, working on equipment uh, where I'm not behind a desk all day. But if you do want to sit behind a desk all day, there's jobs in HR, IT, all quality control, all different types of jobs in the industry. So, 
one success story that we had, uh, we had a uh, transitioning service member and his spouse go through our training program at Fort Riley. They did it together and they ended up both um, getting great careers at the same company. She went into administrative work and he um, went in as a maintenance tech. And so it was this great success story how they did it together, really didn't know where they wanted to go in the industry, but they both found a home at the same company. So um, we've got a ton of success stories like that. And it's just puts the biggest smile on my face when I see someone that, you know, is like, I'm transitioning out, not really sure what my plan is. And they trust us with their transition. And to see them get those careers on the other end is just so rewarding. And, you know, another thing that we have really tried to work hard on is really enticing more female veterans into manufacturing careers, because that may Mm -hmm. not be forefront, right, for them. But Mm -hmm. through our HEROES program, um, nearly a quarter of our graduates are female participants. So whether that's military spouses, female veterans, um, 22% of our graduates are female participants. So we're really excited about that. Our industry alone is 39% female, uh, of roughly around 39% female. So to see a quarter of our graduates come through that are female, we're excited to see more females coming into the industry as well. Now it's great to hear for two reasons. One, you know, which you started off talking about, which was the flexibility piece. I think it's helpful because uh, one, you know, we're trying to figure out what we want to do when we grow up. And the, I think a misconception is that, you know, soldiers want to jump directly into the field or is, is related to what they did in the military. And that's not always the case. A lot of individuals want to pivot to something different. So the flexibility and the different skill sets and different, um, you know, places you have in the manufacturing industry uh, to catch some of these, uh, you know, veterans as they transition, I think it's helpful. But it's also great to hear uh, the opportunities um, that we have for, um, you know, females in the manufacturing industry as well, because again, this is a industry, I think, that is important, um, you know, to our nation. So I'm glad to hear uh, both points uh, with respect to, uh, you know, what is available now, and then also, you know, how that's changed over the years. I really, really appreciate that, you know, feedback. What are the biggest challenges faced by uh, the manufacturing industry today in attracting veteran talent? I think some of the biggest challenges that we hear from our industry is that they really don't have good pathways to getting in front of the military community. If they're veterans that have already transitioned out or guard or reservists, you know, it's sometimes more difficult to find them out in the community because when you look at veterans, guard and reservists, they may be underemployed, like you alluded to earlier. They got out of the service you know, took whatever job they could, but they're actually very skilled and could take a much higher level job. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, you know, how do we get in front of them to create this visibility or have them take another look at, hey, these careers are out here. Have you ever thought about manufacturing? Um, You know, a lot of companies are military friendly, but they're not quite military ready with internal Mm -hmm. hiring processes, employee resource groups, you know, to get them attracted in and hire and retain. Or they may have great resources at one plant, but they don't have it across all the plants. You know, sometimes veterans don't self-identify for one reason or Mm -hmm. another. So manufacturers may not even know the population of veterans or military spouses that work for them. So, you know, through the HEROES program, we tried to guide manufacturers with some education and training training on how to build, better build out those manufacturing strategies. You know, we try to provide them with those tools and resources like our resume distribution um, and some training websites so that they can train their HR teams. But, you know, this is precisely why we created Heroes Make America, to give them that military to manufacturing pathway so that if they didn't have good pathways or they didn't have good visibility or they don't have, you know, a household name like some of these bigger companies like Johnson & Johnson, Caterpillar, some of these, you know, giant uh, manufacturers out there, manufacturers come at all levels, small, large, and every industrial sector in all 50 states. So, and some of them, like I said, don't have a household name. So how do we get them in front of the community to know that these are great jobs that they should consider? And I think you're right on on the money with that, because um, when people are transitioning or trying to figure out what they want to do uh, post-military, they tend to go after those things that are most talked about or uh, most easily understood by the transitioning uh, population. And it's not because those are the only uh, avenue 
you know, going forward. It's just because that's all that they know. So I really appreciate uh, your organization helping some of these industry, some leaders and some small uh, companies kind of get in front of the veteran to explain, hey, here's some opportunities for you to consider as you transition. You may not have thought about the manufacturing uh, industry in the past, but here's some opportunities that you may not have considered that may benefit you. So uh, so say you're a soldier or a military spouse, and you decide that you want to pursue post-military career in manufacturing. What is the best thing that you can do now while you're still in to help you set yourself up for success in the manufacturing industry down the road? Sure. We have lots of ways that the military community can connect into our Heroes Make America program to you know, better understand the industry, whether you come through one of our skill bridge training programs or you're just attending some of our events. So some of the things I would suggest is we host Heroes Make America virtual information sessions, uh, and they can find those registrations on our website, themanufacturinginstitute.org. Um, and they can just start the process to say, you know, what is manufacturing? What exactly does Heroes Make America? could do, how can that help me to start my journey as I transition out or even if they're already out, you know, how can I get tied back into this? Like I said, they could enroll in one of our skill bridge training programs. You know, we have expanded the program to include manufacturing operation certifications, logistics certifications, industrial systems maintenance certifications, Lean Six Sigma certifications, OSHA, um, forklifts. So we have lots of different ways that they can earn certifications through our skill bridge programs. And I might add, those are at no out of pocket costs for them. So that's great. Thanks- Thanks for the support of our community partners, our state partners, our industry partners. We're able to add offer these uh, courses for no out-of-pocket costs for them. Uh, they can join one of our events, our Heroes Connect events, um, our company information sessions that we host nearly every Wednesday afternoon, open to all of the broader military community. And uh, it's typically one company and they can just register and join that. Our virtual and in-person career fairs are all industry specific. So whether we're doing them in person or virtually, it's only manufacturing and supply chain companies on there. And they are so highly successful. We have seen interviews start right from those events and the hiring process. So those career fairs are something we started, you know, just maybe a couple of a year and a half ago, and, and they have just been such a great resource. Uh, upload their resume to the resume distribution. They can do that and get employers looking at their resumes right now. Um, and so there's all types of ways that they can connect in with us. Um, or if they just have questions, they can reach out to one of our program managers and, and just ask questions. But uh, our team is here for them to help them with their transition or if they're already out to help them, you know, maybe relook at an industry that they hadn't considered before. So we've talked a lot about the um transitioning service member or veteran. Now we kind of need to talk about the manufacturers. How do those manufacturers get involved with Heroes Make America? And what does your program have to offer those employers? Yeah, that's a great question. We love our industry partners. So um, we have a small team, but a mighty team, but we have a great Heroes Make America team uh, that is all military connected and has a lot of military knowledge. Um, And so we're able to help them with knowledge about the military. We're able to help them connect into regional installations. For example, if they don't have good pathways into an installation, we can be a connector, a network for them to try to get them connected into the installation or the garden reserve unit or the veteran uh, serving organizations so that they can hire and recruit. We help them increase their company visibility in the military community, not only through our social media channels, but through our hiring events, um, our Heroes Connect events, so the military community can start to learn about their company. Like I said, we've got that direct military and manufacturing pipeline through our Heroes Make America resume distribution that they can get access to. We also have like a hot jobs list so they can list their hot jobs, um, and we we can get that out to all of our candidates um, that are going through our skill bridge training programs. And then we have access to training resources. So we on our website have a whole library of case studies that talk about best practice and building your military recruiting strategy or working with Heroes Make America. Um, We partner with Psych Armor to have some great um, visual webinar resources or like the SHRMS Veteran at Work certification. So they can really look to us as like the 
premier military to manufacturing platform for our industry. It was built for the manufacturing industry, and we love to see manufacturers taking part of it and increasing not only their visibility, but their hires from this community. That's great. And uh, so where can uh, people go to get more information about Heroes Make America? The best way to reach us is through email, um, and yet they can email us at heroes at nam.org, or we also have information on our website at the manufacturinginstitute.org uh, slash Heroes Make America, and they can learn all about the Heroes Make America program, and they can also register for one of those information sessions. So we have virtual information sessions that we do monthly, some of them bi-monthly, um, not only for the participants that are looking to come into the HEROES program, but also manufacturers to learn how they can better engage with the program. As we get close to the end of the podcast, is there one last thing that you want people to know before we close things up? Absolutely. Just that, you know, Heroes Make America is constantly expanding. We're excited about continuing to grow our initiative through strategic partnerships so that we can offer as many pathways as possible to those interested in manufacturing careers. Like I said, military talent is well positioned for these careers, and our team is ready and waiting to assist them with not only their transition, but learning about these careers and how that they can find a new home in the civilian sector and manufacturing. Through our partnership with the NEM, we have access to over 14,000 manufacturers, small, large, in every industrial sector across the whole United States. And finally, at the end of the day, our team is passionate about supporting the military community with opportunities to reconnect with employment, which as you stated earlier, is as good for our country as it is for the economy, as it is for them. So uh, our goal is to move as many military affiliated job seekers into the manufacturing industry as we can. That's awesome. And Amy, thank you so much for being our guest on the podcast today and highlighting what the manufacturing industry has to offer our military and our veteran families. Thank you so much. I was honored to be here, sir. And thank you for your service and your commitment to helping our nation's military move into these great careers. So today we learned about Heroes Make America, who they are, uh, about the programs they offer to help connect the military and veteran communities to manufacturers. We also discussed the types of career opportunities available in manufacturing and how that has changed over the years. As always, we appreciate you tuning in to listen to the podcast. Please follow or subscribe to the Soldier for Life podcast on your favorite podcast platform so you never miss an episode. I'm Colonel Jared Thomas, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Once a soldier, always a soldier, a soldier for life.